present right now the Professor Franco Mani. He has a BA in Theology, BA in MA Philosophy. He has a PhD in Philosophy and Theology. He worked in four subjects, Italian politics, philosopher of 19th and, and 20th centuries, philosophical theology and theology ethics, the works of Tolkien in relation to the history of philosophy, current topics of our society, controversy about race, racism, reform of the humanity syllabus, corruption in academy. A BA in theology, the Bulgarian University in Rome, MA in philosophy, Scuola Normale Superiore in Pisa, PhD in philosophy, theology, King's College in London. Professor uh, Franco Mani, please welcome. Thank you for your introduction. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Sure, sure. Okay. So, uh, hello to everybody. Thank you for attending. Even if uh, so distant from me, very probably, I am here in Italy. And uh, uh, this conference is held in Brazil, so beyond the ocean. However, thanks to these beautiful technologies of nowadays, we can connect with each other. As for me, I uh, am presenting this paper, Apophatic Theology on the Concept of God. Apophatic, yes, a Greek word. We, but since we are, uh, most of us are theo theologians, we, are, we know it already because it runs throughout the academia, the departments of theology has been running for, say, 20 years at least. So, I start. There are two theologies. The revealed one, which is the theology in the proper sense of the word, in the strict sense of the word, and, on the other hand, the philosophical theology, also called natural theology. Abbe McCabe was a philosopher and a theologian, an English uh, theologian, who died in 2001 and uh, is uh, uh, quite renowned for having, um, making, having made popular this popular, popular among the scholars, this um, approach to theology, the apophatic approach. And he follows this line. The god of philosophers, of Augustine and Aquinas, is the same god of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The creator god, as he is meant at least after Isaiah. The philosophical comprehension of God is a necessary precondition for Christology, for instance. Quote, to put it at the simplest, we cannot ask the question, in what sense is Jesus to be called son of God, without some prior use for the word God. And of course, the New Testament did have such a prior use. End quote. According to Aquinas, the power or reason showed um, at its utmost when it acknowledges its own limits. Because by means of reason, we understand that God is unknowable and demonstrates the existence of a mystery. Although human reason allows us to build the philosophical theology, we need to clearly define its limits. Now I'm quoting from Victor White, who was the mentor of Abba McCabe in the 50s. Quote, it is impossible to know God's essence, nature or whatness. Some th Thomists watered this idea and said that it's possible to know the divine nature in a sort of 
non-substantial way. But the French theologian, Per Seortillange, stressed that Aquinas was categorical. We do not know the divine nature at all. We can know that God is, even though we cannot know what his existence means. End quote. However, Victor White maintains that this acknowledgement of reason's limit is not an irrationalistic and fideistic opening. Rather, it makes the theologian feel like a travel companion of the scientists. As nowadays sciences discover increasingly new aspects of nature, which make it more mysterious, and the most familiar ideas about universe, say, space, time, matter, are sub subverted. Let us focus now on how this deductive, apophatic and humble theology deals with the knowledge of God. According to McCabe and Aquinas, in the same way as a proof of the existence of God is a a posteriori, that is, it does not start from an alleged idea of God, but from our experience of the world and of some problematic issues, say change and contingency, the world contains, so also our inquiry of the nature of God starts from the world. What? We know how to talk about God, not because of any understanding we have of God, but because of what we know about his creatures." End quote. This is a fundamental premise. In order to be able to talk of God by true statements, we need to first understand worldly beings. Although the universe relates to God as its cause, it does so just from the point of view of the creatures as effects, say the world, us, the human beings. What could it mean? It means a difference between creation and the other causes within the universe. The other causes, to some extent, depend on the facts as well as vice versa. For example, the sun cause heats the earth effect. But the fact that the earth is heated implies something which happens in the sun, loss of heat, and also a context, a common ground of reciprocal closeness in space and time. Whereas these two elements do not apply to creation. Therefore, our ideas of God relate to God just because he is the cause, a generic cause of us. They do not say what God is in himself. A disciple of uh, Alba McCabe called Dennis Turner says that we are not allowed to conclude that what God is and what God means is confined to our knowledge of those effects. For instance, my experience and knowledge of an effect caused by my laptop, my computer, say, to be able to copy and paste texts by word processors, do not make me understand what a computer is, how a computer works. Augustine said in Latin, Melius situr nescendo. It's better to know while not knowing. And he said also, si comprehendis non est Deus. If you understand it, that item is not God. Because God is aliud, aliud valde, which means other, completely other. Aquinas, after having proved the existence of God, says we cannot know what God is, but rather what is not. However, it is not easy 
to realize that the attributes given to God by Aquinas and the tradition after him, such as these five, simple, perfect, infinite, eternal, one. All of them are actually negations, which are non-composed, non-lacking, non-finite, non-changeable, and non-plural. If these negations were understood as affirmations, it would seem to us that we know what God is rather than what is not, just as our minds really could see simplicity or perfection or human Im immutability, whereas in reality, human minds can only experience what is composed, what is lacking, what is changeable. In reality, we, we give God these attributes to specify that that X factor, which is needed in order to take away some contradictions from our mundane experience, IG change, cannot be conceived as if it itself had those contradictory characteristics. The X factor cannot be changeable, for instance. If not, it would be useless. The, the, uh, the this negative way, the via negativa, of speaking of God is a sort of getting used to understanding that that X factor is other from the world. We become accustomed to many consecutive analytical re removals of the mundane characteristics. Moreover, God does not explain the events of the world because he is not a cause which works inside the world. There, do, there does not exist any fact or phenomenon inside the world which can make us say that that phenomenon is caused by God. Because if it was so, God would be an item of the world, within the world, of the world's chain of causes and effects. Why, on the contrary, if God is the reason because of which everything exists, he is not part of everything. Quote from McCabe. God made everything or God makes everything sounds harmless enough at first. But then let us look at some of the implications. In the first place, if God made everything, God can't be included in everything. God can't be one of the beings that go to make up everything. So everything plus God is not any greater than everything by just itself." End quote. What McCabe tells us here is worth recalling because while understanding that God is not part of the world, we realize also that is not a particular cause within the world. And therefore, God cannot explain any effect or phenomenon within the world. All the particular effects and phenomena in the world are explained only by the natural and social sciences and never by theology. Many people, both scholars and lay people, lay persons, maintain that although natural reason cannot provide us with the knowledge of God, at least Christian faith can. Here we should question this claim while following what Aquinas and Victor White say about it. Can religious faith itself provide us with a better knowledge of God than the, uh, the one provided by human reason and its philosophical theology? Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas, hold that faith as well, and not just natural reason, is unable to give us a knowledge of God's nature. Quote from the Summa Theology of Thomas Aquinas. Although by the revelation of grace in this life we cannot know of God what he is, 
and thus are united to him as to one unknown, still we know him more fully, according as many and more excellent of his effects are demonstrated to us." Unquote. In a persuasive way, Victor White comments, quote, Thomas thinks that even by revelation and faith, we can't know the essence of God. We just know more and better effects, in Latin plures and exteriorens effectus. But never in this life is there any, any exception to the rule that we do not know what God is, end quote. From more numerous and better effects, that is phenomena and events, such as Jesus, life, resurrection, redemption, church, life with endure grace, we can more easily attribute to God that set of perfection, simplicity, infinity, omnipotence, at which by philosophical means, natural reason, alone, we were already able to arrive, even though with more difficulty, more slowly, and with less clarity. Mekem says that every scientific research of Jesus' life we undertake by our naturally given reason will make us achieve an always greater knowledge of his human nature only. Moreover, what we could achieve by our supernaturally given faith is our firm statement as believers that in Jesus there is present a divine nature alongside his human one. However, as believers, we must acknowledge that that divine nature is entirely and utterly unknown to us. But God is the ultimate mystery and that we are peering into the dark. In Christ, Aquinas says, we are joined to God as to the utterly unknown. The revelation of God in Jesus in no way for Aquinas changes the situation. End quote. What does this join to God mean if it rules out knowledge? Good question. Quote. The revelation lies in responding in faith to the offer of love. This is why the revelation in Jesus and the scriptures that speak of him does not remove any of our ignorance about God. We do not get to know more about him. We encounter him. We are in communi communication and communion with him. So far as God is concerned, what we are offered in religion and the scriptures is not a further information, no, but is just a share in his life, passion and resurrection, unquote. Possibly and eventually, McCabe argues, we will improve and refine indeed our knowledge. But this increased knowledge will be just of ourselves, ourselves, of us. This knowledge is really nothing else that, uh, excuse me, nothing else other than ethics, morality, that is, the due meditation on that natural law, which is not a privileged commitment of Christians, but was highly considered by the Jews and the Greek or Roman ancient pagan philosophers as well. This is solely as regards humankind. As for God, instead, what? Our faith seems not like an increase of knowledge, but if anything, an increase of ignorance we become more acutely aware of our inadequacy before the mystery as we are brought closer to it." End quote. And now I'm concluding in a few lines. What does White's and McCabe's interpretation of Aquinas' texts suggest to us is that no one, be he a believer or not, is able to know God's nature. McCabe says something more. The believer is given with a stronger consciousness of the mystery of God than the non-believer is. 
And so, therefore, the believer is more unlikely for him to identify the cause of all in some phenomenon of the universe, say, be it in the human spirit, like Hegel, in the world's will, like Schopenhauer, or in the Big Bang, like the nowadays scientists. I finished. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your speech, Professor Franco. We are late. You have something. Just a few minutes to the questions. Please, if you want to have some questions, you can you can leave. Professor, uh, I I have a, some a one question for your speech. Very interesting. It's about uh, the limit in theology and philosophy and the knowledge about God. You says in your speech in the beginning, uh, the comprehension, the rational comprehension about God, and another. A kind of comprehension, the, not rational, but the experience comprehension you can see, uh, we can uh, have about God. What do you think about these uh, two types of knowledge of comprehension about God? And they distinguish in between philosophy, the investigation of philosophy of God, and the investigation theology of God. Your microphone, please, Professor, is off. If we mean by the word theology, the revealed theology, so what is revealed and object of faith, as distinguished from the natural or philosophical theology, say metaphysics, which investigates the nature of God by means of um, pure natural reason. My answer to your question is that this apophatic theology follows this path, this line, this way, that we are not able to understand the nature of God at all, not entirely, not even in part not even in part, and pretending to know the essence of God makes us, misle misleads us in warped path, warped ways. I give you an example. An example is, if we think that we know the essence of God is the designer of the universe, and so there is a design in the universe. And so the animals, the plants, the orbits of the planets are meant for a purpose, the purpose of the designer. And by means of this purposeful design, we can understand the designer. This is very wrong. This is the argument from design of the creationists in deep United States of America. They think that the ingenuity, so-called purpose and order of the universe can allow us to demonstrate the nature of God as a designer. This is what the traditional the uh, philo philosophical theology of Aquinas ruled off. Because the via negativa is what God is not is not material, is not composed, is not in time, is not uh, um, uh, multiple. But we don't know the essence. If we pretend to know the essence, we would warp, distort, change, modify at our will the natural sciences. I provided you with the example of biology, that one of, you know, Dawkins, because Richard Dawkins, the famous atheist, atheist the, uh, the God Delusions author, the God Delusion author, Richard Dawkins, used this argument for design, saying it is impossible to know from the experience of reality 
that order, that ingenuity, that purpose. It is impossible. And he's completely right. The only thing is that that is not the position of the traditional theology. Aquinas never pretended that we could understand the design of the world. Never. Professor, uh, thank you for your answer and for your speech. We are late, unfortunately. It's very interesting discussions, but we need to stop now. Why, why, is, I, why is I too long in my speech? <laughs> no, no. Because I, I was given 20 minutes, was I? Yeah, okay, but we are late. The other speech the, before you <laughs> okay. was too late. For this reason, uh, we are late now. And thank you.